Hey, hey guys, happy Tuesday. Emily Smiley here. I'm excited about today's topic. I apologize, it's a little later today. Um, I had a couple Zoom calls that ran over um, and some training that ran over, so my apologies. But let's talk strategy. Let's talk about the fact that you may have lied or been lied to. And today is a really, really touchy, hot topic subject. Um, I hope I can get through because I have a lot, lot of thoughts on this. And maybe you have some as well. I do have to go get my kids soon because it is so much later. So we'll see how much we can get through. Um, but let's talk strategy. All right. How many of you, and I'm talking to not necessarily brick and mortar or affiliates, um, but maybe uh, some of you um, MLM or network marketers, um, what are some things that maybe you have been told as far as building your business and strategy that maybe you it took you a year, two years, five years down the road to realize, hey, this is not exactly what it seemed and this is not exactly what they made it to be. And I'm not talking about you know, just bringing someone in and then giving them the next step and the next step and the next step and the next step. Um, because painting too much of it or telling them could be overwhelming. That is not what I'm talking to. I'm talking about the fact that some um, companies and leaders and people that I'm connecting with and talking to, some of the things that their upline are telling them um, are just awful. And this is the reason why so many bump around because they get into, you know, these companies and then they realize, hey, this is not what I thought that this was, right? So some, you know, are pretty simple. So that could be number one, right? Were you told um, that it's simple and then you get in and you're like, this is not simple at all. Um, or is it? Because if you are simply, uh, you know, building a customer base, but you didn't understand that you needed team, right? Was that misleading? Um, it's not selling, it's sharing. Well, I get the truth behind that because you're getting people to share their experience. But if you're saying it's not share, uh, selling, that is incorrect because that is a lie. It is selling. You are selling someone a product and pretending that you're not is deceitful. And this is where so many, um, just the, the industry in general gets a bad rap and a bad name because you're pretending that you don't want to behind this facade and people are smarter than that. Consumers are smarter than that. Um, they're onto your tactics, right? Um, you know, maybe you didn't understand when you joined your company that you would need to host home parties and that's what you needed to do. I know a lot of skincare or makeup, um, you know, companies, they're dependent on hosting home parties or bringing people to parties or the meetings, right? Like I know that's still a requirement in some businesses, which is crazy to me, but you know, I know it happens and it's out there. Maybe you didn't understand that um, sharing meant that you were gonna be on the phone every single night. It doesn't matter if it's a 10 minute call or a two hour call. If you've got enough booked and you're trying to reach 20 people, even if it's a 10 minute call and you've got them booked every single night, it's still, did you realize that that's what you signed up for? And I have spoken with so many people that just didn't understand that. Was it their fault? Maybe, maybe they didn't do their due diligence into understanding the company. Um, but maybe it, they were misled and there is a reason why people in this industry are a little sketchy on coming in and these are some of the things that no one wants to talk about, right? Um, now I say strategy because there's many ways to build your business and there's, there's some that you may love. You know, maybe you love home meetings and you're like, Emily, that's my jam. That's fine. Um, you know, maybe you love the meetings, maybe you know the phone calls, maybe you love that it that it's in the evenings. What, I, what I'm saying, I'm not knocking any of these specifically, I'm just saying that there's a reason why people feel like they have been misled or lied to. Um, hopefully no companies are still making product or um, income claims because that is actually illegal. But how many of you guys still get the, oh, it's that illegal pyramid scheme? And you're like, wait, that hasn't been, that's not even a thing. There is no such thing as the illegal pyramid scheme, right? How many of you have met those objections? I feel like anyone in network or MLM marketing has had that, uh, oh, is that one of those, you know, pyramid things? And then you have to educate them, right? Um, but then it's more than that. It's, 
you know, all you have to do, have you been told this? All you have to do is share with five people who share with five people who share with five people. And then that's it. Like basically, and they're like, oh, well, you know, there's details, but basically that's it. And you're like, oh, okay, well, you know, I think I can do that. Now, again, I'm not talking about like overwhelming them, but I'm saying like most of us, it takes years of us to get in here and then go, okay, this share five people with five people with five people. This is not necessarily easy. It depends on your skill set. It depends on your influence. It depends on your following. It doesn't matter if it's on or offline. You can have a strong following offline and none of them be online or vice versa. Um, so that's not even what I'm speaking to. I'm talking about the average person that most of you are recruiting. So for me, it was mompreneurs. Like that is my jam. That, those are the people that speak to me the most. Um, does that mean that I haven't had others that I've connected with and added onto my team? Of course not. But when I'm sharing with people and I'm connecting with people and I'm, you know, connecting them now at this point with online systems, it's more of a, uh, you know, let's help the average person who doesn't have that. And let's get them the skill set and let's paint that this is not a quick, you know, get rich scheme. This is a skill set. This is a business. Whether you want it part time or whether you want it full time, um, that's up to you. And these are your options, right? There are there are no options that are given. I, I talk to so many people that it's like they come in and then there's one way that they're trained instead of having them come in and going, OK, um, you know, we want to wrap this business around you, but you have to be on calls and it has to be at night. You have to do this and you have to do home meetings or parties or whatever, instead of giving them the option. And then we, have you heard the same? Well, do you want to build part-time or do you want to build full-time? The reality is most people get into this as a side hustle, right? A side gig and they work full-time and they need to be able to bend it around that. And then when you come back and you tell them, well, you have to do whatever it takes or you have to do this, right? It's, it's misleading. Um, and then the other thing I would say is just because the product, just because you like the product, it doesn't make it a business. I've so, so, so many people that I've talked to about this specifically, um, that, that we kind of laugh about it a little bit, like where they're like, well, I just really love this. They, they're just, it's amazing. It smells amazing. It does amazing. My skin looks great or what, whatever the thing, but then you're looking at your business and you're like, you literally lost money in this business and you have for the past two or three years. So it's one thing to like the product, it's another to actually make it a business. And if you're truly building a business, like isn't that why you got into it? Hopefully that's true. So then my next question to you would be, um, you know, did you, did you have to enroll everyone for them to be a customer? Like I've literally had people come into my business and they're like, oh, well, so am I on your team? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, oh, well, I ordered the, you know, the product. Am I on your team? I'm like, no, no, I'm going to take care of you and love on you as a customer. It's a customer base. If you would like to join me, I would absolutely welcome you. And I will introduce you to this new skill set and we'll figure out what you want. And then we'll give you your options. Again, it's options. What are they, their expectations for this business and how do they want to build? And it is okay if they want to build using home parties and meetings and phone calls. My tribe that I love connecting people to now is like, okay, well, let's see if we can figure this out online and, and you know, automate our time, leverage our time a little bit, right? Because if you're a mompreneur, well, for most of us, we're all busy. That, does, that applies to everyone. So when you have to enroll everyone on your team just to make them a customer, is that really a truly a good business model? For me, I only want people that want to build. And so those are the people that I'm looking to connect with. Um, you know, for you guys, if you're wanting to build online, that's what this page is for. It's connecting you with that. Um, yes, you have to be a product of the product, but it doesn't necessarily make a business. And so you've got to look at the strategies, you know, that are in place and give people their options. You guys, the 90s called and they want their network marketing strategies back. Like it's so ridiculous. Like, have you been told some of these lies? You can't connect on the internet. Um, there's a lot of people connecting only through the internet. Think about Match, like Match.com, all these like dating sites. Does it mean they never meet up with the person? Are there bad examples of that? Sure. But are there people actually out there that connected using the app? that then in turn got married. Like that's the best case I can think of with how to build online. 
right? Because that's exactly it. It's like, you are still connecting. You're not, you don't get on match.com to just go, oh, will you marry me? Like as soon as you meet them. No, you don't do that. And it's the same. There is a formula or a series or dating, if you will, that you have to proceed to get to, to get to the point where, okay, do we make a good match? Or will we get married? Will we be to even be together? You know, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. It's exactly the same online. So if you've been told, you know, you can't, you, you can't connect on, on online, then I would beg to differ. Have you been told, um, you know, oh, don't, don't be on Facebook, don't build on Facebook. And then now what? Now I feel like everybody's on Facebook, um, which is fine. But a lot of these are the same people that were drinking the Kool-Aid saying, oh, don't do that. And then now they do. Don't brand yourself. Have you been told that? Well, they don't even realize that's really an ignorance thing because if you're sharing anything, then you are branding yourself. So just because you're not spamming your company's name and logo out there doesn't necessarily mean that you're building correctly or incorrectly, right? You need to, if you're in health and wellness, you're in health and wellness. You can build that. If you're just gonna throw the link out there, Google, hello people, if you do that, people are just gonna go Google what you say. You have to give them a reason. And that is the whole purpose behind branding, is making you more than about your company. There's such a lack of clarity right now around branding yourself um, and, and, and specifically online, it does not mean that you need a website and a blog and, you know, um, sponsored post and a, a business page. Now, do I suggest you have some one, at least one of those things? Absolutely. If you're in for the long term and you're going to build this for the long haul, but it's not necessary. And that has absolutely nothing to do with branding yourself, nothing to do with branding yourself. So it is simply a strategy that most people have um, acquired or at least learned that they need to learn how to do, you know, when building on online. Um, so think about, uh, you know, the, the leaders that you've heard them say about all of these, um, that you can't make money off of social media and now there's tons of people. Now the big hubbub is, you know, all the likes are going away. So, you know, in influencers and all, all of those. But do likes and followers necessarily mean customers and teammates? Absolutely not. You do not need thousands and thousands of followers to have uh, enough customer base or team that you're building a successful business. You simply don't need it, right? So I would, I would say, you know, look at your company or look around you um, if you're looking for people to join your team. And are those same people, first of all, are they making money, right? We've talked about that. Are they making money in their business? Otherwise, why do you have a business? Why would you put time and effort into it? It's, uh, I know you've heard leaders say this, right? Then it's a hobby. There's a lot of people building hobbies out there. But if you actually wanna build a business, even if it's just a part-time gig, then you have to make money. If you see a person who's been stuck at the same rank, rank advancement or whatever in their business, they're probably not building that business up. Or they're stuck because their, their strategies are no longer working right? The internet is here to stay. Social media is here to stay. So you've got to adopt new strategies. I don't know if you guys remember the yellow pages. Anybody remember the yellow pages? But that used to be how you looked up how to connect with someone. That is no, like that is crazy to even suggest. My kids wouldn't even know what the yellow pages even are, right? Because they're like, well, why would I do that when I just can go over here and, right? Google Siri, even better, right? So it's a new strategy. So it makes sense. The outcome is still the same. You're still wanting customers. You're still wanting team members. You're still wanting to build. It's just the process and the strategy and how you do it has evolved, has changed. The industry's changed. The game has changed, right? Your, your ideal prospect and customers, they are a little bit more savvy. They're a little bit more maybe even techie. They're probably on. I think the average person is on social media. Like the average person picks up their phone 52 times a day. And I think that's pretty low. Right? If you're looking for a hotel, how did we used to look for a hotel? I don't even know. But now we have Airbnb, right? There's Uber, there's Lyft. Does it change the fact that you still, the outcome is that you're still staying at a hotel? No. Think about all of the stores that have gone out of business. Um, I think Sears right now is like a big one. Did they adapt quickly enough to recover their business and move online? And, and expand and appeal to the new consumer. No, 
So why do we think if you're building a business, why do we think that that's any different, right? You have to change with the strategy that you are using. The outcome and what you want can still be the same, right? And curiosity, these curiosity posts that you keep hearing, like that's your strategy, um, you have to know how to effectively use that. If you're not looking at the metrics and you're not asking, like so many people do it wrong, they're still posing and posting with their product and they're going, well, I built up the curiosity and I put like join my team or um, you know, that, that they were on sale, why did no one get a hold of me or only one person? If you have 5,000 Facebook friends, you should have more than one person on a post um, commenting or reaching out to you if you post. If not, I would say that is extremely, extremely ineffective, right? Um, so, if you are building online, you need to do it differently. You need to teach several different ways, right? You have to learn how to use it correctly. You have to teach new strategies and how to do this effectively. And so many, um, you know, leaders are still just, whoo, bless their heart. They are hard to get on board. They're still drinking the Kool-Aid of, you know, the company, it's great, it's great, it's great. Yes, it's great. But your ideal prospect is not going to hear one word that you have to say because you're not interesting. And if you're building on your personal page, which is totally fine, because those are the people, if you're sharing your product and it's like a lifestyle type thing, whatever it is, it will appeal to most people. But if you are spamming your product on there, it's annoying and it's not effective. It's a very old strategy. Maybe it used to work, but I could definitely say that we can replace it with something di with different, right? Um, when you use the strategies, newer strategies, it just makes it easier, just easier. Just like trying to book something, just like trying to meet someone if you decide to go on match.com. Are there other ways to meet someone? Of course. Are there other ways to book a hotel or find someone? Can you pull out the yellow pages? I actually don't know that one. I don't know if there's yellow pages still. <laughs> But can you book, um, you know, a ride? Could you call the restaurant instead of just putting in your order? Yes. Could you call for a reservation in, instead of doing, um, you know, reserving it ahead of time online? Of course you can, but it's easier. And most people, once they learn how to do it, they're like, oh, this is so much easier. So why are we still using old, less and less and less ineffective strategies? So if you're in need of a blueprint, I hope this helps. I hope this motivates you to really get out there and look for new strategies, to really look at your business, to look at your comp plan, to look at the strategies that your team and your upline and your sideline and what you're teaching or even what you've told and that you give your team the opportunity to choose different strategies and what works for them and when it works for them and giving them the easiest easiest, newest tools out there so that you can stay relevant, so that you can be in the game for the long haul, so that you're effective and so you're successful, so that you make money at the end of the year and you're a successful business. I'm telling you guys, it's totally a game changer when you invest in yourself, when you invest in learning new strategies to do things differently. You get different outcomes and it's amazing. All right, so Hope you found this helpful. If you do need, um, you know, a blueprint for new strategies, I will uh, post a link below um, for what I would suggest in getting started. It's a free boot camp to kind of help you get a roadmap for getting started online. Um, hopefully, you guys find this helpful, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day. In the meantime, crush it.